Now this is the final C3 topic, a nice easy topic to finish with. You do need to be careful though about what you're writing down in the conclusion of these questions. And it's easy to throw marks away in exams if you fail to write out the correct words. So let's think about this, this equation. Lun x is 1 over x. Let's draw a graph to show how this works. The graph of y equals 1 over x. It looks a little bit like this. And the graph of y equals ln x looks a little bit like that. So we can see that there's going to be one solution uh, which is going to be round about here. The way we're going to look at this is we're going to consider the function fx equals ln x minus 1 over x. And we're going to try 1.7 so we need ln 1.7 minus 1 over 1.7. And that works out to be minus 0.0576. That's two three sig figs. And then we're going to try f of 1.8. So that's ln of 1.8 minus 1 over 1.8. Uh, and that works out to be 0 0.0322. So at this point, at 1.7, 1 over x is bigger than ln x. And at this point, 1.8, ln of 1.8 is bigger than 1 over 1.8. So in other words, the... So let's get this right. So at 1.8, the ln graph is bigger. And at 1.7, the 1 over x graph is bigger. So you might think that's enough, and it sort of is, but you do need to be careful about what you write next. And the next bit, writing out the correct words, is what they're looking for in the, in the exam. So writing out that there's a change of sign between x is 1.7 and x is 1.8 is the reason for stating that the solution lies between those. And as always, if you're asked to prove something, you should write out that proof as the final part of your answer, which is what I've done here. So the solution lies in the interval 1.7 less than x less than 1.8. So this bit, easy to forget writing that bit out, but you will lose a mark in your exam if you fail to put that sentence in at the end. This is the reason, and this is what you're trying to prove. And then the final topic in C3 is iteration. This is also part of the numerical methods. And here we've got to use iteration to find a solution to x squared minus 4x plus 1 equals 0, correct two decimal places. Now, a typical exam question will give you a little bit of guidance about this next step. I'm going to write out x squared minus 4x plus 1 equals 0. There are lots of ways you can use iteration. Uh, what I'm going to do now is to divide everything by x. write out what I'm doing, divide by x, uh, and then I'm going to write x equals 4 minus 1 over x. So this is just another way of writing out this same equation. And then I'm going to use iteration. Iteration is uh, sequences which go from one term to the next. So the iteration that I can get from this equation is xn plus 1 equals 4 minus 1 over xn. So if you remember from uh, the AS course, this is a, a formula that takes you from one term to the next. So let's start, uh, let's start this on the next slide. So as I said, the typical exam questions tend to give you a bit of guidance about how to start this. You'll see this in the lesson. So we're going to start with x naught equal to 3. So don't worry about how you get that. That tends to be a bit of guidance that's given to you. So x1 is 4 minus 1 over 3. 4 minus 1 over 3 is 3.6666. So x2, we now put that value back into the equation. So that works out to be 3.7273 to four decimal places. So 
So x3 is 4 minus 1 over 3.7273, which works out to be 3.7317. So x4 is 4 minus 1 over 3.7317. So keep putting this in, you get 3.7327. So x5 is 4 minus 1 over 3.7320, which is 3.7320. So now it's quite clear that the these x numbers are converging onto a number that's just above 3.73. The question did ask uh, correct two decimal places, so therefore um, x equals 3.73 two decimal places. It's important to write that bit out at the end. Don't just leave it with this and expect someone to work it out for themselves. What's the solution? There's the solution.